Our final program of the 2017-18 season is going to be in May and it's going to be an all Beethoven program. The wonderful lyrical violinist Angelo Chang Yu is going to be performing the concerto. I recently did Prokofiev's first violin concerto with him. It was so pure and pristine I thought Beethoven would be just right. Um, this French connection is a very interesting one. Beethoven wrote a couple of romances uh, before 1800 and they were sort of styled after some French compositions and the style of writing um, there's a sort of heroism as well in the first movement very much connected to the revolutionary movement in in Paris at the time um, the style of writing is somewhat French and Beethoven makes it his own from this concerto in 1806 um, it was not uh, particularly well received partly because the soloist didn't get the music till the very last minute and during the performance some people say between the first and second movement some people say at the end uh, sort of as a protest he played one of his own pieces <laughs> and he turned the violin upside down and played it on one string uh, so he had to show off somehow but the Beethoven wasn't quite the right vehicle the piece didn't really take off until the mid 1840s um, when it was Joachim, Josef Joachim, who was a, a great collaborator and friend of Brahms. When he was just 12 years old, he played the Beethoven Violin Concerto in London with the Philharmonic Society Orchestra. And from that moment, the Beethoven Concerto really took off in the public imagination all over Europe and the world. The French connection with the other piece on the program is the so-called Bonaparte Symphony. That's what Beethoven called this until it was renamed the Eroica. Beethoven was very enamored of Napoleon bringing the uh, freedom, the rights of man to, to Europe when he was consul in, uh, in France. But when he declared himself emperor, this is where Beethoven really drew the line. And he had written this third symphony, the Eroica Symphony. Um, bigger than anything before. It's really a testament to Napoleon. Uh, but when he heard that he had declared himself emperor, he scratched out the insignia and said, no, this is not going to be for Napoleon after all. He's going to trample on the rights of man. But actually later, when it came to publishing the work, he still said, yes, this is my Bonaparte symphony. Um, it's actually, it was sort of composed back to front in a way. The last movement, um, was based on some variations that he'd written before, even some dances. And the last movement is actually based on a bass line theme. And on top of that, you hear This was a melody that he, was, he really loved, that he'd created years before and put in a set of piano variations a few years before as well. Um, and everything earlier than that last movement is, is sort of leading up to the last movement. So the first movement, the first movement is really a bass line that is based on the bass line of the last movement. And we find this connectivity through all of the melodic material in this symphony um, in a way that had never really been done before. There are little connections that Mozart made, Haydn made, but not in the kind of organic way that Beethoven did. So, so this, is, this is a really revolutionary symphony with, uh, with this French influence. And people didn't really know what to make of it at the beginning. There were people that loved it, people that hated it, and then the people in the middle um, you know, sort of understood that Beethoven was reaching for a completely new vision, a new vision of mel melody, of development, of rhythm. Um, there are parts of the first movement that must have sounded to the people that first heard it in, in 1805, must have sounded like the Rite of Spring to the Paris audience just before the, uh, the First World War, 100 years later. Um, so Beethoven was the revolutionary. This was his heroic decade at the beginning of the 19th century. And uh, this is how we're going to end our wonderful 2017-18 season with the Pasadena Symphony. We'll see you there.